Guess what? The world's most valuable company right now, it's not Apple, it's not Microsoft, it's NVIDIA, a $4 trillion chip empire. Their latest H100 GPU, it sells for about $25,000 a card, three times more expensive than gold. And here's the kicker. Even if you've got the money, you'll have to wait in line. Big Tech snapped them all up first. Today, we're breaking down Jensen Wong's five secrets to flipping the script. This guy went from scrubbing toilets as a teenager in the U.S. to building the chips that power Google, Meta, Tesla. Basically, every tech giant you can name is lining up to get their hands on his hardware. His first product? A total failure. But today, Jensen is Silicon Valley's ultimate comeback story. But here's the twist. This story doesn't begin with triumph. It begins with a mistake made for him when he was just nine years old. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Oh, and don't click away after the five secrets. We've got two wild bonus stories waiting for you at the end. When Jensen was nine, his parents put him and his brother on a plane to America. The family thought they were sending him to some elite boarding school. But nope, it turned out to be a reform school for so-called problem kids. His roommate? covered in tattoos. First words out of his mouth were, if you bother me, I'll kick you off the bed. <laughs> Jensen barely spoke English. He and his brother were the only Asian kids there. They got bullied, picked on. They even fooled him into taping a sign on his own door that said, I'm a virgin. The whole school laughed. <laughs> and Jensen? He shrugged and said, well, at least now everybody knows who I am. He didn't break down. He started studying people, what to say, how to act, how to carve out space in the chaos. That's not naivety. That's survival intelligence, way beyond his years. And get this, he even became friends with his tattooed roommates. He taught them how to read. They taught him how to work out. Years later, he laughed in an interview and said, I actually liked my time there. By high school, he'd already skipped two grades and was that kid who played table tennis, wrote code, and joined every science club he could find. And then, at just 16, he graduates early and heads straight to Oregon State University to study electrical engineering. And that's where he meets the love of his life, Lori Mills. Out of 250 engineering students, only three were women. To win her over, Jensen pulled a bold move. He told her, do homework with me every Sunday, and I guarantee you'll get an A. <laughs> and guess what? It worked. They started dating, got married five years later, and she's been his partner for over 40 years. So this isn't just a story about a genius. It's about someone who learned how to adapt, observe, and, when it mattered, go all in. After Oregon State, Jensen spent a decade climbing through Silicon Valley. First at AMD, learning how processors are built. Then at LSI Logic, where he rose to director of microprocessor design. By day, he was leading teams and pitching clients. By night, grinding through a master's degree at Stanford. On paper, he was set for a cushy executive career. But Jensen had a countdown running in his head. Because when he got married, he promised his wife Lori, before I turn 30, I'm starting a company. And he wasn't bluffing. So, in 1993, at the age of 30, he sat down at a Denny's diner in San Jose with two friends, Chris Malachowski and Curtis Preem. They ordered bottomless coffee, and for four hours straight at that sticky diner booth, they sketched out what would become NVIDIA. And here's the twist. Jensen had actually worked at Denny's as a teenager, washing dishes, bussing tables, waiting on customers. Later, he joked, if I'd stayed, I might have become the CEO of Denny's. Instead, he built a company worth $4 trillion. Today, that exact Denny's is like a pilgrimage site for tech geeks. Jensen once said, If you want clear thinking, order the coffee. If you want big ideas, grab the red booth in the back. Turns out, not every Silicon Valley legend starts in a garage. Sometimes, it starts over dinner coffee. They bet on a market that basically didn't exist yet, 3D gaming. The logic was simple. PCs would get cheaper, everyone would want games, 
and those games would need serious graphics chips. Sounds perfect, right? Except their first product, the NV1, fell flat. It crammed graphics, audio, and even controller I.O. onto one chip, a tech Swiss army knife no one asked for. Gamers didn't want it, and partners canceled 99% of their orders. Why did it fail? Two reasons. One, lots of features, almost no apps could use them. Two, the market only wanted a solid, affordable 3D graphics chip. The cash balance dropped to under $2 million. A startup nearly dead in round one. Then Sega came calling. They wanted NVIDIA to build a next-gen game chip. Everyone thought, we're saved. But they didn't realize this almost became the final straw. As the work went on, they discovered the direction was wrong. The whole industry had moved to triangle rendering, while NVIDIA was still insisting on quadrilaterals. Wrong geometry. The faster you move, the faster you fail. So Jensen made the call. He went straight to Sega's CEO and said, if we keep going like this, you'll lose money and we'll die. And then a miracle. Sega not only agreed to cancel the deal, they gave NVIDIA $5 million so they could fight again. But cash isn't a product. This was their last bullet. They went bargain hunting, buying secondhand equipment from a failed emulator company. Dusty old tools. That became NVIDIA's lifeline. In 1997, they launched the Riva 128, a triangle-based GPU that ran real 3D games and was plug-and-play on PCs. It blew up. Over one million units in just four months. Dell and Gateway rushed to place orders. NVIDIA finally had a hit. Jensen's first law of business? Brilliant tech doesn't matter if the market won't buy. Find what people value. Then you get to live. But if NVIDIA stayed just a gaming card company, they could have been replaced all over again. In 1999, NVIDIA coined a brand new word, GPU, and they launched the world's first programmable graphics processor, the GeForce 256. This wasn't just a graphics card. It was a parallel processor that could actually think. Before this, graphics cards just followed orders. Draw this, shade that, but the GeForce 256 let engineers write their own programs to control it. Basically, your PC just got a tiny supercomputer inside. But the real game changer came in 2006. That's when NVIDIA introduced something so abstract, most people didn't even get it. CUDA. CUDA wasn't a chip. It was a programming model and language. For the first time, developers everywhere could write software for GPUs. In plain English, that graphics card under your desk just became your personal supercomputer. Funny thing is, when Jensen first announced CUDA, half the engineers in the audience tuned out. Some scrolled on their phones, others whispered, this guy's bluffing. Back then, almost no one cared. It felt too academic, too far-fetched. But in dorm rooms and garages, grad students quietly started using CUDA to train AI models. GANs, ImageNet, even the early foundations of AlphaGo, all powered by CUDA. Fast forward a decade, AI takes off, and suddenly everyone realizes CUDA is the hidden fuel. As Jensen later reflected, people thought it was a dream. But that dream became the engine of the AI revolution. Jensen's real edge wasn't bluffing. It was getting the smartest people in the world hooked on NVIDIA's tools. And habits? They're harder to break than any mode. By late 2022, the world went crazy for AI. ChatGPT was everywhere. And suddenly, AI wasn't just for scientists. It was a tool anyone could use. But here's the catch. To make AI run, you need massive computing power. And the only company that could deliver it, NVIDIA. Their latest beast, the H100 GPU, goes for about $25,000 a card. That's three times more expensive than gold. And here's the crazy part. Even if you've got the cash, you'll be waiting in line. Big tech snap them up before you can. 
But here's something you probably didn't know. Those slick NVIDIA keynotes you've seen online, a lot of them weren't filmed on a giant stage. They were shot in Jensen Huang's kitchen. During the pandemic, he recorded GTC presentations at home. Black leather jacket, stove in the background, and the internet went nuts. The kitchen keynote became his personal brand. Only Jensen could turn a kitchen into a billion-dollar stage. Here's the bigger picture. AI today is like a global arms race. And NVIDIA? They're the only arms dealer that matters. Chips, software frameworks, developer tools, they sell the entire stack. And the numbers are insane. In fiscal 2025, NVIDIA pulled in $130 billion in revenue. Their market cap smashed through $4 trillion, making them the most valuable company on Earth, even ahead of Apple and Microsoft. From kitchen keynotes to the world's AI superpower, Jensen proved it's not just about building great products. It's about owning the entire system. All right, the main story's done. Time for some bonus nuggets. Did you know NVIDIA's Jensen Huang and AMD's Lisa Su are actually related? Yep, genealogists traced their family tree and found out Lisa Su is Jensen Huang's first cousin once removed. And no, they didn't grow up together, so there were no family barbecues with the CEOs of two rival chip giants. They each built their careers separately, and only later realized the tech rival across the table was family. We will do a whole episode on AMD in the future, so make sure you hit subscribe to catch it. And here's another wild one. Jensen once made a bet with his colleagues. If NVIDIA's stock ever hit $100, he'd celebrate with a tattoo of the NVIDIA logo on his shoulder. And guess what? When the stock crossed $100 in 2008, he actually did it. He got the NVIDIA logo inked on his left shoulder, and apparently, it hurt so bad he nearly cried. So yeah, CEOs aren't always just suits and PowerPoints. Sometimes they're cousins in a corporate duel, and sometimes they're CEOs with tattoos. Jensen Huang started as a 16-year-old janitor cleaning bathrooms. Today, he's the founder of a company worth $4 trillion. What got him here wasn't being a super genius, and it wasn't just luck. You don't need to be a genius. You don't need the perfect starting line. But you do need the courage to place bets. Bets on markets no one else sees. That's on trends most people don't understand. That's on work you're willing to grind on for years. And here in 2025, a lot of us are asking, will AI take my job? Am I already falling behind? But remember, Jensen wasn't the first person to chase AI. He just saw the timing and placed the right bet. The strongest weapon in the world isn't an algorithm or a chip. It's your ability to make choices others don't yet understand. So here's the question. What bet are you willing to make today? If this story sparked something in you, don't keep it to yourself. Hit like, subscribe, and share it with a friend who's ready to place their own bet. Because one choice, one story, can change everything.